Okay, in this video, we'll continue with our discussion on feasible T condition. Like we in the previous session, if you if you just get back, we have seen something called feasible distance and advertised distance. Feasible distance is the total cost from our router to the destination, whereas the advertised distance is the overall cost from the neighbor to the destination. So whenever uh, EHRB is going to calculate, it is going to maintain the feasible distance information as well as it is going to maintain the advertised distance information in its topology table. So we can verify that when we get into the labs. Now there is one more thing we will be discussing in this video is something called feasibility condition. Now before we actually get into this feasibility condition, first let's try to understand the difference between success R and feasible success R. Like if you remember, we discussed in our previous videos where EHRP is going to pre-calculate the second best route. Okay, so which means it's going to calculate the best route, we call it as success R, and it also calculate the second best route, we call it as feasible success R. Now, the success R route will be present in your uh, routing table, as well as it will be present in your topology table, whereas the feasible success R information will be present in your topology table. So in case if the best route fails, it's going to use the second best route automatically. But again, there is one thing we need to keep in mind that EHRP also pre-calculated the second best route, but it has to satisfy one condition. And that condition is, we call it as feasibility condition. So let's try to understand when EHRP will calculate the second best route. Like I'm going to take one scenario, EHRP with feasible success R, and then when EHRP will not calculate the second best route. So then we'll take one more scenario where EHRP without feasible success R. So let's try to understand EHRP with feasible success R. So the condition here is, if you just get back to our basic concepts, what we learned in the previous video, we have seen how to how the feasible distance and the advertised distance is calculated. So I'm going to assume that you, you know the feasible distance is the total cost to the destination, whereas advertised distance is the cost from the neighbor router to the destination. So now the feasible condition says that in this scenario, if you just take here, the there are three possible routes. The first route, the feasible distance is 2000. And the second route, the feasible distance is 3000. And in the third route, the feasible distance is 7000. So that is what uh, we have seen in our previous uh, video as well. So out of these three, the feasible distance is nothing but the cost, the overall cost to reach particular destination. Now in this, the least cost is preferred. So in my scenario, this route is having the cost of 2000, this route is having the cost of 3000, and the third route is having the cost of 7000. So automatically it is going to decide the best route based on the least cost. So in my scenario, this route will be considered as my best route, or we call it as success R. Success R means uh, it's going to be the best route, and then, the second best route, here you can see this is my second best route, this will be my feasible successor. Feasible successor means, so here in this scenario, I have a second best route. Okay, so I'll come to this condition again, just, just we'll, we'll keep it for the next slide, I'll come to that condition also. So now, uh, what, we, what we learned, that EHRP is going to calculate the best route, we call it as successor, and the second best route, the second best cost will be my feasible success R. Okay, so let's get back with the same topology, but this time I have made some changes to the cost. So I made some change to cost here. You can see now again from router A to router F, I got three possible routes. So the first route, the cost is 2000. You can see 1000 plus 1000, the cost is 2000 here. And the second route, the cost is 1500 plus 2500 is going to be 4000 and the third route the cost is 7000 2 plus 2 uh, 4 4 plus 3 7 now in this scenario you can see this is the cost the same cost what i wrote here now the first route will be your successor this is my successor because it is having the least cost but in this scenario there is no feasible successor so which means in this example there is no second best route calculated by EHRP. 
Now the reason is why it is not calculating in this scenario or in this diagram and why we have a feasible successor in the previous scenario. So let me tell you why, why is that. So that is because of feasibility condition. As I discussed, EHRP is going to calculate the second best route and the second best route will be only calculated if it satisfies a condition and we call that as feasibility condition. So which means the condition says that FD of the successor route must be greater than AD value of the feasible successor. So which means this value FD of the successor, this is my successor route must be greater than AD value of the second best route. So in, in simple terminology, I can, I can say instead of using this complex terminology, I can simply say FD value of the best route must be greater than AD value of the second best route. Okay. So if you want to make it more simpler, I generally use a more simple terminology like first best, first value. So here first best, nothing but successor, first value, nothing but your FD value. So here I got first value is FD, second value is AD. Must be greater than second best, second value. So if it satisfies, then only it is going to calculate or consider this route as the second best route. So in my scenario, FD value of the successor is 2000, AD value of the second route is 1500. So 2000 must be greater than 1500. In this scenario, it is going to satisfy my condition. That's the reason in this example, EHRP will calculate the second best route. But if I go back to the next scenario, let's go back to the next scenario here also, FD value of the successor must be greater than AD value of the feasible successor. But in this scenario, it is not satisfying the feasibility condition. So the successor, uh, the successor cost should be greater than the advertised distance of the next second best route. But in this scenario, it is not greater than, so it's not going to satisfy the condition. In this scenario, there you have a best route, but the second best route will not be pre-calculated by EHRP. Now, what is the reason for that? Now, now you can ask me what is the reason why they, it is not going to calculate the second best route. And the reason is, now the router C is advertising to me, saying that, what it says, what is the actual cost? The best route cost is 2000. And the neighbor C is advertising to me something 2500 or 2500 is the cost, which is something higher than my best route. So it is not going to trust that information. It says you are advertising to me something more than my best route. So my best route is 2000, but the cost from the neighbor to the destination is 2500, which is something more higher than my best route cost. So it's, it's going to assume that there might be this information might be looping or maybe this information may not be imp appropriate. So it's not going to trust that information. And that's the reason it is not going to uh, uh, use that as a second best route. But if you just get back to the previous condition in this scenario, I have a second best route because the cost is 2000 and the neighbor C is advertising to me saying that 1500. So 1500 is something lesser than my best route. So it's going to trust that information. So it is going to write down this particular route as my second best route. So the next thing, what will be the behavior or how exactly it is going to behave in these both different scenarios? Let's, let's get back. Let's get back with the first scenario. In the first scenario where you have a second best route, let's say if the best route goes down, if the best route goes down, what happens? So now in this scenario, I have a second best route. So I have a successor. I also have a feasible successor, which means second best route is available. So in case if the best route goes down, automatically without any calculation, without any algorithm or without any query messages, it is going to make this second best route. This is my second best route. It's going to make as a best route and it is going to promote this route into the routing table without any calculation or without any algorithm because you have a second best route uh, pre-calculated in this scenario. 
But what happens in the other scenario when you don't have a second best rule? So let's get back to the next scenario where I don't have a feasible successor. In this scenario, if the best route fails, let's say this is my best route. Right now, the best route is done. And I have a second best route, but this second best route information is not trusted. And the reason is because it is not satisfying the feasibility condition. The AD value, AD value of the successor is not greater than uh, AD value of the feasible successor. So which means the feasibility condition is not satisfied. So if the best route fails, the router says, I have this, I have other routes, but I'm not going to trust that information. So I lost my successor. Then in this scenario, the router is going to send a query message to the remaining routers. What it will do? It will send a query message saying that I lost my successor. I lost my best route and I don't have alternate route, which means I lost my successor. I have some other routes, but it is just going to confirm by sending a query saying that, do you have any information how to reach F network or how to reach some other networks, B network, something like that. So the router A is going to send a query and in turn C is going to reply with a query with to that reply query message saying that, okay, I have the information. If you want to go to F, you can go from my router that is C router and the cost at Rodas distance is 2500. And then what it will do, it is going to add this cost as well. And it says, okay, the total cost will be 4000 if I go via this route. And then D router also will reply saying that if you want to go to F, you can go from my router and the Adidas distance is how much? 5000 because from the neighbor to the destination, that's what 5000 and the total cost will be 7000. So now the router A will, will get a replies based on the reply messages it received from the other neighbor. It's going to compare these two values. Why it is going to compare these two values? Because this is down as of now. So it's going to compare these two values now. It says, okay, this is my best route. I'll use this as a best route. And in this scenario, again, if it satisfies this condition again, whatever FD value must be greater than this value. If it not satisfies, it will not consider this as my second best route. So the major difference between these two scenarios is there is no query. There is no reply uh, reply pa packets sent if you have a feasible successor. But if you don't have a feasible successor, when it when it do not satisfy this feasibility condition, uh, simply router A is going to send a query and expecting a reply messages. So there is a query and reply process uh, goes between the neighbors and router A is expecting a reply from everyone. And based on the reply, reply messages received from all the neighbors, it's going to compare all the routes and it's going to calculate the best route and then write down that best route in into the routing table. So which means it's it's just like a confirmation of the alternate route before it is going to utilize if there is no feasible successor. So this is the uh, behavior uh, which is different a little bit when you when you have a successor when you don't have feasible successor. So if you have a successor, if it satisfies this condition, simply if the best route goes down, it will start using the second route automatically without any query, without any reply messages. But if you don't have a su feasible successor, which means if you do not have satisfy the condition, if the best route fails, it will simply send a query to all the neighbors and the, all the neighbors will reply with some information if they know, then based on the reply messages, it's going to compare all the values. It's going to calculate the best route and write down the best route in the routing table. So this is the behavior. This is a slight change in the behavior. Uh, what happens when you have a success, when, when it satisfies the condition, when it do not satisfy the condition. So one thing we need to keep in mind, we need to say, okay, EHRP pre-calculates the second best route but it has to satisfy a condition called feasibility condition. And that condition says FD value of the successor must be greater than the AD value of the feasible, uh, feasible successor. Nothing but second best route.